Hey everyone, it's Lemon here. I just tested the Scalebreaker DLC and here is the summary of my experience. Let's start in the beginning. First of all, I had to download this thing and that was quite a trip by itself. My internet was so slow that after about half an hour it was still in 5%, so I did the only thing you can do in that situation. I booted up Minecraft. <laughs> I got some diamonds, helped out some villagers, made some new friends. ESO was still at 10% and I was already playing through Dark Souls. After beating the game for the second time in a row, the update was still in 15%, so I started to reevaluate my life. Meaning, I bought some good old potato chips, watched every single Shrek movie, including the Christmas special, and then finally, right before the existential crisis started to kick in, there it was. After reading through the updated legal terms and probably agreeing to sell my kidney to Zenimax, Mr. Banana Man finally began his journey. I grabbed the DLC and boy was I ready to break some skills. Now the base game got a lot of new updates. Multicrafting, one of the best features ever, not gonna lie. After 5 years of waiting, you can finally craft, deconstruct and refine multiple items with one single click. Our prayers have finally been answered! Yep, I'm gonna just delete this, thank you very much. Honestly, I love this update. I don't know why this wasn't a thing before, but it's better sooner than later, I guess. Now, the next feature is almost as good as the first one. The undaunted keys are now a currency, instead of a waste of space in your inventory. So now I finally have some space for more important stuff. Awesome. Also, the undaunted quest givers realized that they should step up their loot box game, or surprise mechanics, so now you can purchase multiple mystery boxes from them. And would you look at that. For one key you can get a mystery coffer, which is basically the same as this chest were in the middle before, so they give you a random shoulder piece from one of the monster sets. For five keys you can buy a specialized coffer that contains one random shoulder piece from two specific monster sets. We did it guys, RNG is no more. Well, yeah, uh, something like that. And if you have 50 keys somehow, you can exchange them for a shoulder style page of one of the monster sets. The available style page changes every month, and they can drop from regular mystery coffers as well, but they are very rare. The third biggest update in the base game is for the trading guilds. Now they can bid on maximum 10 guild traders each week instead of just one. They can put separate amounts on the different traders, set the priority, and once the guild wins the trader, all their other bids get refounded. And finally, probably the most controversial feature of update 23, purchasable, maxed out skill lines. ESO is becoming pay to win. Uh, no, that's not the case. I understand why some people might think that way. The same thing happened when Sky Shards became purchasable. History just repeats itself. To be honest, I don't think this counts as pay to win because you still need to max out the skill line at least once on one of your characters to unlock it in the crown store. And you can still level up the skill lines for free, buying them is completely optional. Saves you a lot of time, can't argue with that, but still. You can play ESO without even touching the crown store, and I hope it stays that way. Anyway, these are the skin lines that you can buy at the moment, and these are the ones that are coming to the crown store in a future update. Now let's take a look at the new DLC. Scalebreaker brings two new 4-player dungeons to the game, Moongrave Fane and the Lair of Marcelloc. The first one can be found in North and elsewhere, and it is an ancient Khajiiti ruin. You can encounter a gang of vampires and their leader who is a former member of the Dragon Guard, the group which later became the Blades. If you played the other Elder Scrolls games, you probably heard of them before, but we're gonna learn more about them in the last DLC of the year, Dragonhold. This vampire group basically wants to suck a dragon. I mean the blood of the dragon, uh. <laughs> Anyway, these are the item sets you can get in this place. Now the second dungeon, the Lair of Marcella, can be found in Grathwood. There is a deadly corruption that comes from this place and it threatens the holy Elden Tree, so the elves are freaking out. In order to stop the threat, you must kill a dragon, like you did everywhere else pretty much. And here are the item sets you can get in this dungeon. But wait, there is more! Simply for entering one of the two dungeons, you will receive a Dread Eurelian Mask style page. And you can get the matching shoulder style page for completing both dungeons and water and difficulty. If you complete the Moongrave Fane Challenger achievement, you can get this pet. It's a, it's a scam with a backpack. <laughs> wow. Uh. Other than these, you can get a furnishing item, a die, a memento, and way too many titles that you're never gonna use. Yep, and that's pretty much every single new stuff or feature that came in with this new update slash DLC. Now, console players, y'all gonna have to wait a little bit more before you get this update. Unlike us, the PC master race and, and, and the Mac gamers, whoever they might be. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and roll the outro!